who knows what the Raphael is? Raise your hand. Oh, that's actually pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so you shouldn't talk at all, I think. Uh, because I'm not going to say anything new, I suppose. Um, probably start with demos right away. Okay. So, the biggest problem of Raphael is the fact that people usually have no idea what to do with it before I say what it is. Uh, usually people say, oh, it's a nice toy, it's nice, it's cool, good for charts, and then just think, okay, so what could I do about charts? So I can show you some examples I did uh, recently. So this is a sketch-like application I did with Raphael. Uh, I did it as a side project at my current job. Uh, we have like a code review tool and we would like to add something like picture review so you could drop some pictures and somebody could you know come here and say like hey look at this guy and then just oh like don't look here and uh, oh that's that's kind of nice head <laughs> and they're like oh I, sorry I'm just need to it's like this yeah so it's all this very editable all this semi transparent and, and so on and so forth. So this is like one of use cases how you could use this vector graphics stuff. So Raphael is for vector graphics. I forgot to say that. If you haven't heard about Raphael, it's vector graphics. Now the animation. What's the vector graphics or graphics library without good animation? This is actual demo from the site, so not really new if you've already been on the, on the website. So the idea that as soon as you create any object in Raphael, be it circle, rectangle, or custom shape, you could then change the attributes and change it field, change it stroke, change it something else. There are lots of attributes. I'll talk about it later a bit. And of course, you could change it instantly or you could change it over the time. So for example, you could change the coordinates of the circle and field over the time like this. It's pretty kind of cool thing. And uh, you could change the rotation of the ellipse. You could change the rotation of the rectangle. Uh, you could change path into another path. So you could grab one path and animate it to another path uh, along the time. Did I say it works in i6? It works in i6. And uh, in i7, yeah, in i8, in i9, in Safari, Firefox, Opera, Chrome. Okay, it's about Chrome. Anyway, and, well, it's not real morphing. If you think that this is real morphing, it's not real morphing. It depends where the coordinates are started. So you just basically transform one path into another. So for example, in this rectangle transforming to triangle, it's not really nice looking morphing animation. This looks much better here. And the only difference is that the first rectangle drawn from the left top corner and the bottom rectangle is drawn from the right top corner to make things a bit more smoother. But if you put the points in correct way on the path, then animation is really smooth, like for this circle, or for this circle. Basically, the first circle has three points, and the fourth circle has four points. That's why animation is so smooth. If you have different points, it's not really as smooth. So it's quite stupid animation. Uh, the way it could be used could be used, for example, for the, these sort of charts uh, to do the animation on the fly. As soon as you create any object, you control any of these parameters. And for example, you could, when you create a curve, you could basically control the curve and change it the way you wish. And it's very, very dynamic and stuff. Now, the other way to use, like, this is something I saw on Bespin project. And I'm thinking, oh, that's a cool idea. I should probably try to create a demo which looks alike. And I kind of show this demo on our homepage. So when you when you edit the page, you could say, okay, now I want to add the comment to the page. So you just click anywhere and you have a menu pops up and you could choose, okay, I want to add comment and something will happen. Or you say, okay, I want to favorite this page and favorite this page. So again, the difference between this and Canvas <coughs> is that this actually also works in IE the same way. 
Uh, you could use the gradients in, uh, in Raphael as well as anything else. There are some limitations, I will talk about it later. Okay, let's back to our presentation. Now when I show it, Right, so this is Raphael. This is a graphic library written in JavaScript, and you could use JavaScript to create graphical stuff. And Raphael provides you the adapter to make it work across all the browsers I'm aware of. Uh, so how is it done? Well, first of all, how it was created. Uh, a bit of history, sort of. It was created because I'm stupid. Uh, I was working on the project for, we have like a hack day in Atlassian, the company I'm working for, and I need to create something to impress Java developers uh, in the company. And because they're Java developers, they have no idea about JavaScript, so you can't impress them with some, just something. I should create something visual, you know, so they could ask, how the fuck you did it? <coughs> so I was thinking, oh yeah, we'll create some chatting. So I pick out the Dojo GFX and start hacking on Dojo GFX trying to draw some stuff. I spent one hour and didn't succeed even to draw a circle. And I decided, okay, I'm just idiot. I can't find this, how this API works. I just draw myself, whatever. And I start hacking on with SVG and VML. So basically it's SVG. I choose SVG because I, first of all, I was using SVG back in 2001 and I kind of like it. And SVG is cool. And SVG support is kind of getting there. The only one problem with SVG, of course. Uh, and, you know, I wouldn't say how much I hate Explorer because it's kind of understandable. But believe me, guys, I hate it a bit more than you. Because you probably, most of you probably never actually work with this monster. The VML is the grandfather of SVG. It was created by uh, Microsoft and Visio guys to probably, as I assume, so when you save to web from Microsoft Word, all your charts, all your you know, lines and curves and shapes will also be saved and you could view them in Explorer. So they come with a standard for vector graphics, which is pretty cool in the, in the, in the idea. They submitted to W3C, W3C rejected it. But they like the idea, so they create SVG based on VML. And Microsoft actually take a part in the creating of SVG, but for some reason they decide not to put it into their browser and come with their proprietary standard, which obviously cooler, yeah? It's like, gee, VML. VML and SVG share the same idea. You could create objects in the page just like you create divs. You create circles, rectangles, curves, whatever. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. Now, VML and SVG are just two different APIs to kind of the same sort of engine. VML API is a piece of shit. <laughs> right? It's smoking, stinky piece of shit. Uh, but as soon as you use SVG and VML together, you could make all these guys happy and they could all show you the same circle, kind of the same way. Not guaranteed pixel perfect, but depends how you wrote it. And please note mobile Safari here. So SVG uh, supported in uh, touch, whatever, iPod, iPad, iPhone since uh, 2.2. Uh, software update, so basically everywhere. Now, to make these two, these two things are way different. Like, really different. Like, totally different. The API is so different, SVG and VML. And uh, the only way I found to make them work together is JavaScript. So, I created a JavaScript layer, which de detect the feature, do you support SVG, the browser, or support VML and use the different methods to creating the stuff. Now, 
This is how it looks like in the coverage of the features. The SVG is a bit bigger than VML. Uh, VML is a bit smaller. Now the Raphael trying to cover something it could cover everywhere. So it doesn't cover all the SVG. and doesn't cover all the VML. But it covers a big enough chunk of functionality to create something useful. Then people are compl complaining about, hey, the SVG had this awesome feature, like clipping puff. Could you put it in Raphael? You could put it in Raphael. It's open source project. As soon as you make it work in, in Explorer, <laughs> I'll be happy, absolutely. I have no idea how to put it in Raphael, how to make it work in VML. I mean, if you can, awesome. Submit the patch, I will apply. Gee. Now, uh, Raphael is 20 kilobytes, zipped, and minified. So it's kind of small. Now, as I say, can you do the charts is usual thing. It's like people are like, oh yeah, awesome, I could use it for charts. Yeah, you can use it for charts. It's not only for charts. You just saw this broad core presentation. Like, I don't know, 40% of uh, UI interface elements could be done with Raphael. Like all this attaching to the anchor. So yeah, you could do it with images. But with images, it will be like, okay, you have like five images, five CTP requests, all this, oh, Steve, Steve here, okay. SVG it will be much faster if you have one JavaScript file, right? Which contains all this stuff. And most of the time, actually, the SVG is smaller than the image, unless it's, you know, photo of your wife or something like that. So where it, where, where it could be used? The first and obvious example is Raphael GS home site. Uh, <clears throat> I did the redesign recently, and I create all these images for the icons. I draw it myself, so I don't need to pay anybody. Uh, so I, I'm sorry it's, if it's ugly. Uh, I draw these icons and uh, I, I make an amazing logo by, by Sabi Cube. But I found that I have too much HTTP requests. And my Raphael GS has about 2,000 hits per day, which is not big for some corporate website, but it's pretty big for open source library, which is a special target. Uh, so it has like lots of hits. So I decided, okay, I could use sprites. I'm smart, I read the books. So I was, I was using sprites. And still it was like not good enough. So I think, oh, well, it's, these icons are pretty simple. I could draw them in Raphael. I draw them in Vector in the beginning. So I draw them on in Raphael. So now I cut another HTTP request because it's just in my JavaScript. And it's actually smaller than the images. And so all this stuff, all this stuff are not images. This screenshot contains no images at all, right? So they are like three files, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's all. Well, the page down there has one image more, but this part doesn't have any. How cool is that? Now, I, I'll, I'll quickly show you why this matter, actually. This matter because this is the page, right? This is how it looks. Uh, now, let's zoom it, right? Because it's not an image. It's zooming really nice. And you'll be surprised, but it's printing also very nice. When you print it, the logo and the icons looks like it's not from the page, like it's come from PDF or something. If I print it up, I hang you the printout, you will never believe it's printed from the web page. Because it's vector. In Explorer, it works the same way. So it's not just uh... So size does matter. Your icons or your logo, like if you have a logo of your, of your company on the page, creating the, recreating the logo with Raphael doesn't only make it smaller, it also makes it print nicely. I particularly know about the guys who was using Raphael for their application because they have to print it and they have to have a pie chart. And because, you know, you work with a client and client usually is not a technical person, which we call just dumb, right? So he says like, oh, I print it up, it looks pixelated. WTF. 
But because it's an image, you know, the DPI of the screen is not actually as good as DPI of the printer. Like, what we can do? Like, I don't know, it's pixelated. Make it look nice. So they pick up the Raphael and draw the same pie chart with Raphael. Print it up, everybody's happy. Looks awesome on print. So if, if you have any icons in your page, like, like icons on the left is Raphael icons, icons on the right is, are images. When you zoom them up, the difference is stunning. And printing. Could be very important. Could be really a killer. I remember when I was developing the application and it could be printed, so I have to include another huge GIF file with a logo, then resize it to make it small and hide it with CSS and open it with a print so it will print it with biggest image, which is zoom it out so it will be nice on the print. And I always feel guilty because I put the extra you know, image for the user to download just in case he will print. Now you don't need to worry about this, just make it with Raphael. It, it works and it prints nicely. The other user, like UI interface things you could use Raphael for, like for example, for something like this. This is actually a live example from uh, one of my current projects. We have this pop-up appears on the page. And you know, like in any uh, mid middle to big company, we have a developer, we have a designer, and we have a manager. Right? And the uh, manager says, hey, we need pop-up. Designer says, awesome, rounded corners. So I come to design and say, hey, OK, rounded corners, let's talk. <clears throat> Do you really need rounded corners? Oh, rounded corners are awesome. Do like, you really, really need rounded corners? Well, OK, IE could be without rounded corners. OK, fine. I make it with CSS. Awesome. Now he said, OK, and now this little Twixie on the top will be awesome. Like, little Twixie to show where you are. OK, Twixie. OK, I draw the image in Photoshop, put it in, make it look like this. Awesome. Then it was day of review. So me, manager, and designer sit together, and I show them, OK, that's how it looks like. They're like, oh, it looks pretty nice. Isn't, isn't the frame too dark? Make, make it lighter? OK, yeah, give me like, I don't know, 10 minutes. I have to redraw it in you know, Photoshop, the image. I have to upload it. I have to build the package, run the application, and then come back together. And I will say, could you just play with Firebox? No, I can't play with Firebox, sorry. Or could you change the background? No, I can't change the background. Like, again, tell me, oh, come on. So. I have free time. I delete all this code and replace this thing with Raphael. The next review was so much smoother. Wanna change that? Yeah, yeah. Wanna, can we make rounded corners a bit bigger? Yeah, a bit smaller? Yeah. Does it work in Explorer like this? Yeah, it works in Explorer. Does it rounded corners in Explorer? Yeah, it's rounded corners in Explorer. The co most complicated path, part was to draw a shape like this. I should say it's not the most complicated task I ever had. So I successfully achieve it. So Raphael in the UI, for UI elements could make your UI more flexible, could make your code smaller, because if you have similar UI elements with different color, for example, you could easily achieve it. Theming the UI, easily achievable. You don't need to create five different images for gradients and background for five different themes. What else you could do? That's a risk game. I started to develop, but I was too lazy to finish. <clears throat> I make it work, so you click on the, on the country, it creates the arrows where you want to attack. You click a country you want to attack, they bump to each other. And, but then it was bored, and I just, the rules are too complicated. The JavaScript is easy. So, but you can do stuff like that. You can do it with this. This is very small. And if you look at the footprint of this page, uh, it's tiny. It's tiny because it has no images again. And just one JavaScript file. Then another, another, another unexpected usage for the Raphael we found in our applications, this page also contains no images, as I told. Right? So, this shadow is real shadow, it's semi-transparent. So it, it's on gray background, you can't really appreciate it. But if you have text on the background or anything, it's semi-transparent shadow. The shadow done with Raphael. 
and shadow dump is uh, gradients from black to transparent. And we were using this shadow now in our products. Why? Because the size of the images to create the shadow is about 100 kilobytes. The size of Raphael library, 20 kilobytes. Which means, if in, even if you use Raphael just for this shadow, nothing else for the project, it's already worthwhile. Not mention that Raphael is, again, just one HTTP request. And for images, you have, like, what, eight HTTP requests? You can't really spread them. So that's a win-win. And yeah, it works in Explorer without you know, dancing and shaking. And in AE6, I mean, semi-transparent shadow. Another small example, it's the table, uh, which exists in the results of some uh, web development sur survey. And the JavaScript enhanced the table by adding the charting to it. So this is HTML table. And underneath of HTML table, if JavaScript is on, we're adding the chart using Raphael to make it you know, much, a bit easier readable thing. Just an enhancement to existing. Again, it's very nicely when, when people need to print it, it prints very nicely. You have very nice printing output. Now, <clears throat> as soon as we are at the Geeky conference, I can talk about geeky stuff. OK. I was struggling with animation. When I did animation the first time, I had a problem. After a while, I noticed that if you have, like, this, this is, in this test, I create, like, I don't know, about 200 circles, draw them in a, in the line with a cycle. And then I decide, okay, now all the circles animate to a particular X. So they should all, you know, come to the one line. And I noticed that they, because they, it takes a while to animate each circle, then when you come to the last circle, the time is different and the position is different. So they're not moving as a whole line, but instead they're moving like joggy. And the first is browser, the joggy edge of this. In Explorer, they're just going like this and then coming to the line at the end. Because they, first of all, they don't have the same timer. Each of them has a separate timer. And second, because uh, I say animate, it means, which means I go through all of them and say animate, 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 animate. So when I come to this guy in the middle, I say animate. The start of animation is different from the guy in the beginning because some time has passed when I come to it. So I add another method, animate with, and if you have objects in a group and say animate, they all animate with. So it ne never happens like you have a frame, you have a text, you animate, and text goes, you know, following the frame. So this is a original video of how it was. You could see how joggy it is. And then after update, it runs very smooth. It's very rock solid line. I'm a bit proud of this. <laughs> Thanks. I know, I know somebody will appreciate it one day. OK. In a uh, in recent release, uh, people start complaining that in Explorer, the quality of the graphics of the shapes is a bit dodgy. You could see the shapes on the left. Well, you could see they're not as good as the shape on the right. There are some problems, like here. There are like some problem with a dot, with a question mark. It's not really there. There are like one pixel differences here and there, which could be very annoying. Why it happens? Because VML is awesome API, right? In VML, when you specify the path, you can't specify you could only specify integer values for pixels. In, in the SVG, you could specify you know, pixels for floating point numbers. So for VML, I have to round them. The problem with rounding is, of course, sometimes one pixel is not much. But sometimes half pixel is a lot. And this is exact examples of that. If you have small shapes, like these 32 by 32 icons, you could see they are dodgy on the left. They're not really as smooth. So what I did at the end, 
uh, because VML can draw with half pixels, it's vector engine. It's just API is totally fucked. <laughs> so I draw the image when you create a path, I draw image like 10 times bigger and then zoom it in with VML internal features to zoom it down 10 times. And then I have precision, not one pixel, but one tenth of pixel, which is kind of enough for everybody for so far. If it will be enough, I will make it 100 times bigger and then zoom it 100 times. But 10 times is good enough. And then on the right, you can see the icons. I compare it with a, like Firefox rendering and it's pretty much the same. So I'm pretty happy with that. So this is like in the latest Raphael 1.3.2. And Raphael 1.3.3 is on my laptop waiting for a re be released. <laughs> uh, by the way, the whole Raphael was written on the train. I have a very long connection from, work, from home to work. It's one hour. So it's like wasting one, two hours per day. So I bought the laptop and the whole Raphael, pretty much 100%, was written on the train on this particular device. <laughs> so, and as I said, it works on iPhone. Oh, sorry, on iPad. <laughs> right? It doesn't work on Android. Because Android, guys, doesn't include SVG support in their WebKit. I, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't comment on this. Just, I don't know. I haven't write a line of code to make Raphael works on iPhone. As soon as, uh, as, soon as OS 2.2 was released for iPhone, Raphael just magically started working there. That's the power of web standards. Because when it's about SVG, Raphael relies on web standards. That's it. When it's about VML, it relies on Microsoft implementation of VML. Because, don't be mistaken, the VML specification, despite written totally by Microsoft, and VML implementation and Internet Explorer are two different things. Like if you read MSDN and think that's how things are, that's not how things are, right? There are lots of bugs in, like Microsoft love bugs. I think they just love insects in general. It's like they, <laughs> they create the API, they document it, and they're like, oh, come on, guys, it's boring. Let's add some bugs. And they add some bugs. <laughs> Nobody stopped them from implementing them totally because it's like, you know, I wrote it, I implemented it. Like, why should make bugs? Anyway, anyway, anyway. <clears throat> API. I think API is the most important part of any JavaScript library. That's probably why jQuery is so popular. I don't want to offend jQuery, but I don't think it's like the greatest library ever. But I think that API is very fucking sh sweet. And that's why it's so great. Not because it's a great library. I mean, it's a good library. But because API is so good. That's why it's so popular. That's why you, know, you can't compete with jQuery much. So I spend a lot of time on thinking about API. And as soon as I talk about jQuery, I just, you know, I just steal it from jQuery. <laughs> I chat with John, he's okay. Uh, so how to create uh, stuff in Raphael? So first of all, when you wanna draw something, you have to create canvas. Not that canvas, okay? Not HTML5 canvas. I like this, why, like, we are smart people, okay? Why are we giving dumb names to the products? The prototype JavaScript library, the closure JavaScript library, the canvas, damn it. Now I can't talk about canvas without confusing people. It's not canvas, it's not HTML5 canvas. It's canvas, canvas. You know, canvas people drawing on, you know, canvas. <laughs> I call it paper, okay? <laughs> so you need to create a paper to draw on. Very simple, there are three ways to create the paper. <coughs> paper, Jesus. First way, you, you write Raphael and put the three parameters. The ID of a placeholder, some div, for example, and dimensions, width and height. Second variant, you put the actual DOM element, placeholder, and width and height. And the third variant, you put top left, width and height. Depends what is most suitable for you. 
Then, as soon as you create a paper, you can draw on the paper. Uh, what you can draw, you can draw primitives, of course. Uh, you could draw a circle, you could draw a rectangle, and you could draw ellipse. This is primitives. In, differ in difference to Canvas API, I actually include circle function. So be thankful. Uh, for the circle, you, you specify coordinates of the center and the radius. For the rectangle, you specify x and y width and height and optional radius of the corners. By the way, in VML, when you specify the radius of the corner, you specify it the value of radius is a percentage from the shortest side of the rectangle. That's very convenient indeed. <laughs> so it's not a pixel, like if you specify everything in pixels, and in, in SVG you specify in pixel, and in Raphael you specify in pixels, in VML it's percentage of the shortest side of the rectangle. For whomever it could be convenient, I have no idea. <laughs> so Raphael take care of this, and Fortunately, not only this. And as soon as you create an uh, element, in primitive in this case, as you see, you assign it to the, uh, to the object, to the variable. Then this object, the primitive, is a wrapper uh, object around the actual representation SVG or VML in the browser. And you could access the actual DOM element by saying circle.node or rec.node. I would recommend you to do this only if you really know what you're doing, because SVG and VML are so way different. So if you decide to write your program cross-browser, think twice before accessing .node. But I give you this option, whatever. Each, uh, each uh, element has a set of methods, the thing you can do with it. So you could animate, you could animate along some path, you could animate along some path different direction, you could animate with another element, you could set attributes, and the attributes is probably the most useful uh, method. So you could set and get attributes from the element. You could attach uh, event handlers like click on mouse, mouse down, mouse, move mouse out, and so far, and so forth, and so on, and so go. So example, uh, we create a circle, then say circle.rttr, and you specify the objects which have uh, uh, attributes for the circle. The attributes I just take from SVG specification. So if you know SVG, it should be very clean for you what to do. If you don't know SVG, you could always read the SVG spec. I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory. The fill is fill, and the stroke is stroke color. So as uh, Raphael supports not only hexical, hexadecimal uh, representation of the color, but also RGB, and I also include HSB, uh, hue, saturation, brightness, because it's kind of awesome to have. And stroke width could be vari It's also on the pixels, and opacity is from zero to one. You also could specify all the parameters, like uh, CX, CY, and radius. In fact, you could create circle without parameters at all. You could just say, create circle with bracket, bracket, and then say dot RTTR and put all the attributes there. You could grab attributes by specifying it as a string. And obviously, you could animate. When you animate, the first parameter is also the same attribute object. So this is attributes where you want to object have after the animation. Not all attributes are animatable. Uh, it's kind of obvious. And you could have a milliseconds, and you have, obviously, a callback. And you could have easing. And you could create your own easing if you don't like the existing easy. So the attributes exist on the, all the objects, all the elements are this. Of course, some of them are only make sense for some elements, like CRC have only sense for images. Uh, font only have sense for text. Uh, target, the target makes sense for everything. So you could add, add href for any element, make it a hyperlink. You could add rotation. The path only makes sense for path. So pathes. I hate this word. Pathes. How do you English speaker pronounce this? Pathes. It's when you, you could create different custom paths. And that's uh, the most powerful thing about Raphael. So the path syntax is very simple. You say paper.path and put the path string. Easy. There, 
Example of pass string. <laughs> it's very simple. I have to tell you. It's right from it's right from SVG. So I like it. it's like not rocket science really. So I, I'll explain it a bit. It's actually much simpler than it looks. So it's all in, in SVG spec, and you could read it if you want to write it by hand. But uh, basically, the whole string contains of commands and parameters for the commands. So each letter is a command. All the numbers, comma separated or space separated after the letter, are parameters of the command. As easy as that. So this is a command. In this case, it's move. So we move our pen to the particular, particular x and y. So this is x. This is, and this is y. So capital letters means it's absolutely moving. Lowercase letters means it's relatively moving. So you have here, you have moved to x, y, then draw a relative line to x, y, draw another relative line to x, y, and so on and so forth. Nobody asked you to read them. So let, let me show you some demo of actually usage of passes. Uh, I have this PDF file on the screen. <laughs> It has a very recognizable icon, right? So let's uh, open it with my favorite vector driving program. So this is vector icon for a Firefox logger. Simplify it just for sake of this demo. Now let's save it as SVG, right? Okay. Now, this is a test HTML. This is a small HTML I wrote just for, for this demo. So it's basically just HTML which contains uh, Raphael JS include and then some JavaScript which on load, draw Raphael paper and then I will draw some paths here. Let's find this file. Uh, this is five four. Uh, just open it. Right. So you can see here. This is funky pathways already encoded here. So you don't need to write it by hands, unless you're crazy or just like pain. I don't know. But you could just grab it from Illustrator or Inkscape or any vector uh, any vector tool that supports. Uh, that supports a SVG, which is pretty much everything. So it, it adds all the information here. So it gives me the fill color. I could easily put this fill color here. Oops. Now, if I say this, that's what I've got. Right? How easy was that? So we have this path right here. It's vector, it's zooming. You want to do something cool about it? Okay, let's do something cool about it. I don't know. Let's, let's animate it. I don't know. Uh, Something like this. Something you probably can't do with the images, right? So it's just a short demo of the. So like, don't be scared by this path syntax because most of the time you don't really need to use them. But sometimes, like when I draw the, when I, if I just need to draw the little Twixie, not the whole thing, then drawing Twixie I could draw it, of course, with uh, the string methods instead of creating it in Illustrator or something. Now, obviously, each good library need plugins. And you can create plugins for Raphael as well. So again, I steal the syntax from jQuery. 
So you could write Raphael.fn arrow, and that means that PayPal object will have the arrow method now. And inside the arrow method, this is actually a paper. So it will be running in context of the paper. And you could draw some custom, you know, custom shape here, for example. If you need to use this arrow all the time, you just create a method and then just use paper.arrow, bloom, bloom, bloom. You could also add custom uh, methods to the elements. Then you write Raphael.l, and I create, for example, a shortcut for fill and stroke instead of using ATTR all the time. So that makes just your development a bit easier. Or you could create some Raphael, in pub Raphael plugin and publish it. And there are some plugins. I really, really want to create a plugin page on RaphaelJS.com. I just don't have a bloody time, but I will do it. Talking about plugins, uh, uh, one of the biggest plugins I wrote is the Graphiel. So Graphiel is a charting plugin for Raphael because everybody wants to have charts from Raphael, most of it, anything else. So Graphiel is a charting plugin. Let's take a peek. Oh. So this is the pie chart drawn by Graphiel. Nothing really exciting. Let's to make to really appreciate it, we have to look at the the source code for this. Okay. Pie chart. So uh, So here it comes. So basically the line to create the pie chart is this. You create the, you specify the coordinate, the width and height, and radius. Oh, I mean X and Y and radius. And then you put an array of the values. And it creates the pie chart for you. Boring. Okay. It's yeah, it, it it's nice, like it's nice to have a pie chart. But what you really want to do is to add some, you know, <coughs> events to the pie chart. So let's add event for the hover. So when I hover the sector, uh, this function will fire. And this function will run in the context of the object which have a access to the sector. So I could say this dot sector dot RTTR, uh, I don't know, stroke black. Something like that. Let's do something useful. OK. Uh, what I want, I want to create a drop here. So uh, Graphile also comes not with just uh, charting stuff, but some helpful methods, like drop, for example. And when I say drop, I want to show like a small pop-up with the value of uh, this particular segment. So I'd say, OK, I know the coordinates of the center of the segment in the context object. This is a max, and this dot and y, and this dot value. It's already a bit more useful, right? But not really totally correct. So let's uh, hide it. So on mouse out, I want actually to remove it if it exists. That's a bit, a bit better. Right? So you could see what the actual values for particular cases. It's a bit, a bit not nice looking. I mean, it's a bit boring looking thing. So let's, uh, I actually know the angle. M angle knows the angle of the, of the seg segment. Yeah, that's better, right? Make it a bit more funky. So you could make it as good as, like, there are lots of parameters. There are lots of different things. You could make it uh, bigger if you wish to make it more visible. You could replace the drop with, uh, I don't know, pop-up. Pop-up doesn't have angles, so we just kill this. 
something like this. You can do more because it's, you control what's happening on mouse over. You could draw, you could draw a pop-up, or you could actually access the context of the page and draw something using Raphael. You know, highlight the whole sigma and draw arrow here, draw something, alert something, change the hidden input field in the different corner of the page. You decide what to do. You handle the events. It's done for developers, not for sucky users, right? So this is Graphail. All the things are open source. All the things are free. I forgot to mention that. But if you wish to give me money, I'm always glad to have it. Uh, I did it for my, on my free time. And I like to do this more. And everyone can draw with Raphael nowadays, right? In all browsers, you don't need to use Flash. Well, you, you have to use Flash. When people are saying Raphael is a Flash killer, I'm really glad to hear that. But it's bullshit. Flash is not about to be killed by Raphael or SVG or HTML5. Flash has lots of things to compete with. But if you adopt what, like if you have small project, if you have like, again, like the Sprout Core, Google or Yahoo Pipes have this, you know, pipes connecting the elements and you want drag and drop around. Yeah, you can go with Flash. You can write your own engine in Canvas. Use X Canvas, which is totally wrong approach. Well, Canvas are, in VML are very different things, right? Or you could use Raphael for that. And don't invent the wheel. Well, you could invent everything that I invented. Find all the rakes in the grass I found. Good luck. I mean, yeah, it's fun. It's painful, but it's kind of fun. Or you could just use whatever I, I wrote. And it's open source, so you could contribute, you could make it better, you could nobody contributed so far much. There were a couple of there were a couple of patches, but they were pretty much small. Uh, I'm working alone. So the Raphael team is pretty small and tight, but we're working hard to deliver the best results for you. <laughs> and yeah, uh, you can draw if you draw in doubt, open your mind, web is not rectangle anymore. Okay, make shapes, make it, make it rocks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions? Jesus, yeah. Is it possible to, uh, so you were showing us the API for setting up the, uh, the pages, is it possible to resize a page once you've set up? Resize the paper? Yes. It is possible. Okay. You have an API for that? Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't go through all API because it's, yeah, there is. Yeah. So I noticed on some of the path, um, when you were giving a floating point, you had a, a lot of significant digits. Have you found like what the trade-off it is where you can still have an SVG image that scales pretty nicely with the path with, while trying to reduce the size of it? Well, what again, your question? So you had some things where you're like, go to this X and this Y. And it was like, you know, one point and then three digits. And so you had a lot right. of significant figures. Could you reduce that so your overall path string would be smaller, but you still have a high quality image? It depends. It depends how big is your path. So if your path is 32 by 32 icon, that could be significant. You could round it to integers. You could see problems. If your path that big, like 800 per 800 pixels. You could round to integer, nobody will notice a difference. So it depends on the path. When I create a map of Australia for the real estate agency ask me, and I have it as a demo. And that's very nice because, you know, you know like you go into real estate agency and you have like in your case probably US map and you say, select so like your state and you're hovering. And they either use flash or image map or just looks dumb, right? So with the Raphael, you could avoid using Flash and make it work on the iPad. Uh, or you could just make it easier to implement. Because to use Flash, you have to have Flash developer in-house. If you have, well, awesome. Why, why bother with Raphael? But if you have just JavaScript developer in-house and don't have Flash developer, and you need to create something vectory, 
Raphael could be a choice. So in, for, for Australia, I rounded to one, one uh, number after, after dot. It was good. Just integers was a bit dodgy on the edges. One number was okay. okay. Yes? It's a bit off topic, but uh, what block were you doing in Texas? <laughs> it's called monofur. And this is called eurofurens. It's two fonts which comes together. It's very nice. I like it. Aside from some of the little soul fixes that you have to do in VML in the new release, is there anything that you aren't able to do entirely in VML that you can do with SVG that works in the graph support SVG that you can't do? And I hear that everything working. Well, Raphael is basically it's two scripts, VML and SVG implementation. They are absolutely, totally different and don't share anything, pretty much. There are some generic functions like parse color, parse path, but in general, they're way different. There are a lot of things in SVG which I would like to implement, but I can't because VML has lots of limitations. The gradients is the best example. In VML, you can't have radial gradient on anything but ellipse. That's very useful. And you can't, that's it. It's a bug. When you add radial gradients, you have rectangular gradients, if you understand what I mean. It's not actually radial. And even on the custom path, it's rectangular. So I don't know work around. As soon as I found, I will put a page. But so far, I have no idea how to work around this. So this is limitation of Raphael. The other limitation you can't specify, you could specify as many colors in gradient, but you only could specify one opacity at the end. You can't specify multiple opacities. In SVG, you can. And in everywhere, you can. In VML, you can't. It's just there's no even way. It's not, it's not a bug. It's just API doesn't allow you. There's no way. Why? I don't know. Maybe it's useful for some you know, Microsoft engineers. Maybe they found it. Oh, this will be useful for people. I don't know. That's all? Thank you very much for my time. Thanks for your time.